Watch me by the crowds of people and the priests who sing their praises Or the hunger and thirst for righteousness But it's only found one place So take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holies Take the pulp and by the me by the crowds of people, priests who sing their praise, for a thunder and thirst for righteousness, but it's only found one place, so take me into the holy, holy, take me in by the blood of the Lamb, take me into the holy, holy, take the cold and by the A reading from Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenant to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent out servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his own son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. Oh, thank you, Christine. Appreciate that reading of the scripture. And welcome each and every one of you to our service here this morning. Those that are listening on radio, WBCI 105.9 on your FM dial. You're listening right along with Ron this morning. Welcome. And those of you that are watching on our video webcast on our um, website, uh, ubctopsum.org, and you may be watching there along with Ralph and Rebecca. Welcome each and every one of you. Now, before we ever get started, I want to uh, invite you, if you happen to be listening or watching, because you are busy on a Sunday morning, you have uh, work or, or some other obligations that you are taking care of on Sunday mornings, uh, we are going to begin offering a alternative worship service for those that have to work on, on Sundays. And that is beginning this Tuesday, we are offering a Tuesday at noon worship service. It is a service that's uh, uh, a worship service. 
Uh, Tuesday at noon, bring your lunch. You can enjoy your lunch while you're here. Uh, our goal is to have you in and out. Uh, if you happen to be at lunch at your work or something, we can get you back to work on time. But uh, we would love, if, if that is the issue, we would love for you to come and join us beginning this Tuesday at noon. Thanks again for being here with us. Our joke this morning. One of Tommy's favorite games was to ride his mother's broom around the yard like a horse. When it started to get dark, Tommy went into the house. He left the broom in the yard. In cleaning up after dinner, Tommy's mother asked the boy to go bring her the broom. But I'm scared to go out into the dark, Tommy said. Mother answered, the Lord is out there, honey. Don't be afraid. So Tommy went to the back door and cracked it open just a little bit and called out, Lord, if you're out there, hand me the broom. <laughs> oh, good stuff, fun stuff. Oh, there was a movie back a few years back. The title was Despicable Me. Despicable Me. Basically, it was an animated film about a mastermind thief named Gru. And Gru was in this competition with another thief named Vector. Now, the two of these were trying to see who was the greatest thief of all time. And the ultimate prize for these two was to see who could steal the moon. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, give away the ending if you haven't seen it. It's a cute show, but, but without giving it away, uh, Gru adopts three orphan little girls uh, as part of his scheme. And in one of the scenes of the movie, as, as Gru was there with the girls, Gru is trying to figure out some of the intricacies of, of how he's going to steal the moon and, and how it's going to all work out. And then all of a sudden, he stops, he raises a finger, and he says, Light bulb! <laughs> Which is one of the most recognized symbols that we have when somebody gets it, isn't it? Yes, that light bulb. In the comic strips, when one of the characters figures something out, a light bulb appears above their head. Some folks in real life uh, have heard it called, you know, that aha moment. Or then uh, I like to think of it as the V8 salute, the, uh, the, the uh, vegetable drink V8 and the commercial several years ago. They'd go, ah, ah, <laughs> I got it. The portion of scripture that Christine just read for us this morning was taken from the Gospel of Matthew. And I just want to take just a moment here, just real quick, um, Due to the storms of the past week, our, our presentation may be a little bit different than it has been in the past. Uh, we, we had some equipment that uh, we think may have been affected by that, uh, by that storm earlier in the week. And so if, if we're coming across a little bit different, don't, don't adjust your radio. <laughs> don't try to adjust your TV or, or your computer screen. It's uh, we're, we're making do, and we've got uh, uh, folks coming out to look at it. They just couldn't make it before we, uh, we started our, our recording. So uh, uh, please uh, just bear with us, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll make the best of this all around. <laughs> but Christine read for us a portion of the Gospel of Matthew, and we remember that Matthew is one of the four Gospels, each one is a, each one of the Gospels is a story of Jesus' life from a different perspective. And you'll remember with me that Matthew was a tax collector before he was called to be a disciple of Jesus. As Rome had their way of doing things back in those days, when they would conquer, when they would overtake a land, 
they, they would not, number one, they wouldn't uh, do away with the religious beliefs of those people. They found that the people were happier and they would be better off if they allowed them to continue on with their religious expressions. And, and so when Rome took over this area, um, they allowed the Hebrew faith, the Jewish faith to continue. But Rome would also take citizens and they would hire them to be their tax collectors. Those that, that uh, go out and uh, collect the taxes for Rome. So a tax collector was seen not only as an agent for the oppressive folks of Rome, but they used to be a, a um, part of the community, and so now they are also considered to be a traitor. Oh, but these folks that were hired by Rome kind of got caught in the middle. But it, to make things even worse, though, uh, Rome would not punish a tax collector if they collected too much tax. In fact, <laughs> they would allow the collector to keep anything that was over and above what they required. So the temptation was too great by so many of them. And so they would attempt to collect too much from their countrymen. And uh, uh, they could become very wealthy from doing such things, from unjustly overcharging. But Matthew was, was one of those that heard Jesus' message. And he heard Jesus' call. And he leaves behind that occupation, that that he was doing to follow Jesus. And he writes what we call the gospel, the, the uh, accounts of Jesus' life, for those of that day to recognize what Jesus is, and for those of us today, as it is carried on throughout the centuries, and we can read it today. Now, here in the 21st chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, we find Jesus talking with some priests and, and, and some religious leaders. When you get a chance, I always encourage you to uh, uh, read the Scripture before and after that that is read in, in our uh, uh, Scripture readings for these, for these messages. These verses, these stories, these accounts, they don't, come in a vacuum. They're not just all by themselves. They're, they are part of a bigger story. And, and like this morning, when we take a look at some of the other things that was going on, we find that when Jesus was talking with these chief priests and religious leaders, it's, it's within that time of the final week of his earthly life. He has already came th come through the gates of Jerusalem, riding on the donkey after that triumphal entry. He has already come in. He's already cleaned the temple. He's already done that, and he went home, and then he comes back the next day, and he starts teaching in the temple. And here, some chief priests and some of the religious leaders confront him. They, they see that the, many of the people are starting to to hear what he's saying and starting to go towards him, and, and which means they was going away from them. And so they, they confronted him and asked him about what kind of authority he had to be doing these things that he was doing. And, and you can read those types of things. But, but uh, um, as part of that conversation, kind of towards the end of that conversation, as Christine read for us, he tells them another parable. He tells about a parable of a landowner with a vineyard. A very conscientious owner, as it appears, as he makes all the right moves, he does all the right things to make that land uh, and that vineyard a, a successful thing. He brings farmers in to rent the land and to be the coordinators of, those, of, the, the, of, the, of the property there. And we see that it does prosper. He does prosper because at this point, the owner sends someone else to gather up a cut of his profits. 
uh, the agreement must have been that uh, I, at the end of the uh, at the end of the harvest, I get a cut of what the harvest is. And so, since uh, they didn't have since they didn't have PayPal or direct deposit or anything back in those days, all right, he had to send his messengers to the farmers to collect. Well, time and time again, as the messengers went to collect, the farmers that leased the land, they didn't want to pay their, their rent. They didn't want to pay that portion that was due the owner. And so in order to keep from doing that, they tortured and killed the messengers. They didn't want to pay. When the owner then decides, well, if they didn't listen to my messengers, then I will send my son. They will respect him. They didn't have regard for the owner's son either. And we're told that they killed him also. Then Jesus asks those religious leaders, those chief priests, Ask them a question. He says, when the owner himself returns, what's going to happen? The chief priests and religious leaders correctly answer the, uh, that the owner will have the farmers, those wicked farmers, killed. And, the, and they will lease the vineyard to others. Jesus took this teaching moment to explain that this is exactly what is happening in that day and that time. Before these religious leaders' very eyes, it was happening. Jesus quotes a portion <laughs> of Psalm 118 there in, in, in the scripture there when he, start, when he talks about the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone there in verse 42 of our scripture, that it was a quote from Psalms 118. And it would be a psalm that these religious leaders and these chief priests would know very well. And he uses that to show them that this parable that he told, that earthly story with a heavenly meaning, he took, breaks down the parable for them. And it, and, it, and it shows them what it's talking about. God, God the Father Himself is that owner. The prophets, the prophets through John the Baptist, earlier in the text, or earlier in the, in the scripture, if you read before here, there, there was some questions and stuff about John the Baptist. The prophets through John the Baptist were the messengers. He says, makes the declaration that he, he himself, Jesus, is the son. And the evil farmers were those chief priests and religious leaders. We can almost see their reaction as, the, as Matthew describes how they reacted. It's almost like they pointed to the sky with a smile on their face and said, light bulb, <laughs> that aha moment. They got it. The chief priests and religious leaders were told, understood that he, what Jesus was telling them. They understood, but they did not buy into it. Because we're told that if they... If they had bought into what Jesus was telling, they would have dropped what they were doing right then and there and declared him to be the Messiah. Instead, we're told that they wanted to have him arrested and thrown in jail. <laughs> Jesus was telling them this parable to explain that because they don't accept him as the Son, the kingdom of God was going to be taken away from them. God's chosen people, the kingdom of God was going to be taken away from them and given to someone else, given to us Gentiles. 
We shake our heads, don't we, at those silly religious leaders? <laughs> Why didn't they believe? It was laid out right there in front of them. They got it. Aha! Uh -huh. But they didn't believe. Ah, oh, why? Why? And yet, we still have folks today, don't we, that are faced with that same decision. The Holy Spirit has shown us that God loves us so much that He gave His Son for us so that Jesus would take our sins and nail them to the cross that He was crucified on. That spiritual death that each and every one of us deserves, Jesus took upon Himself. And all we have to do is accept the gift of grace that God offers us through Jesus, the cornerstone that was rejected by the builders is now the foundation for eternal life because of God's love for us. We can spend eternity with Him in all of the glories and perfection of heaven. That has been revealed to us. If that is the first time you have heard that this morning, it has now been revealed to you. <laughs> and you, each of us has an aha moment that the Spirit reveals to us that God loves us unconditionally. The issue is, what do we do with that information? What do we do with that revelation? Because you see, each of us has an eternal soul. And what we decide today will determine which eternity we will have. Will we choose to believe in Jesus? To accept that gift that God has given to us? And will we receive eternal life? Or will we reject that message and, and go the way of those chief priests and those religious leaders and not believe in what God has provided, which leads to eternal death. Eternal life, eternal death. It is our choice, and it is our choice to make. No one else can make it for us, okay? <laughs> our mothers, our fathers, our grandmothers, mothers, our grandfathers, aunt, uncle, Nobody, pastor, deacon, nobody can make it for us. We make that decision ourselves. And it is our choice. Which do we choose? To believe in Jesus or to go the other way and believe, not believe? Let's pray together. Father, I thank you again for this glorious day, and I thank you for your very presence with us even now. God, you have spoken to us through your word. You have spoken to us this morning. A message, Lord, your message, that is as unique as each person who hears it. A message that has come straight from you. God, help us to hear, help us to recognize, and help us to use your message to mold us into the people that you would have us to become. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. Thank you for the forgiveness and grace that you have offered us through Jesus Christ. Thank you for your presence with us. We pray in Jesus' name. And as we end our prayer here this day, we also lift up to you your, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray as we pray together in unison. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.